Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. Issue 2 of the Charles Soule Star Wars comic series recently was released and several bits of information were provided to Star Wars fan in the issue. The issue opens with Leia confronting Lando and questioning whether she and the Rebels can trust him. We learn that Leia and the Rebellion's 4th Division are attempting to regroup following their defeat at the hands of the Empire in the last issue. At this point, they know they're being hunted by the Empire and they are also aware that the Empire has broken their transmission codes, which means any rebel cells contacting one another are at risk of the Empire immediately being able to pinpoint their location and descend upon them. Following the Battle of Hoth, the various rebel cells fled to various rendezvous points in hopes that it would minimize the Empire's abilities to capture or destroy a large amount of the rebels' forces and their fleet, even if rebel operatives were captured. If a rebel from one cell only knew where their cell was supposed to rendezvous at, they then could not divulge the location of other cells since they wouldn't know where other cells would be rendezvousing to. With the rebel fleet now strewn across the galaxy at various rendezvous points and unable to communicate with one another due to the Empire's ability to break their transmission codes, Leia and the commanders of the 4th Division are working on a plan to contact the other rebel cells and have the rebel fleet regroup and reorganize their strategy for moving forward. Leia, however, informs the 4th Division that her and the other commanders believe they formulated a strategy to work around this obstacle. We're then introduced to Commander Grek, who goes on to explain the Rebels' plan, which involves using a huge space station in the Outer Rim. I actually talked about this in a previous video, but I believe this is an additional clue at what Lucasfilm has in store for Project Luminous. Anyway, Commander Grek goes on to explain that the space station, which was built during the days of the High Republic, was used as a beacon for travelers to navigate the Outer Rim. Since, according to Commander Grek, the Outer Rim was not as settled at that time as it currently is during this point in the Star Wars timeline. I don't think it's a coincidence that Charles Soule, who has been announced as one of the five authors to create stories for Project Luminous, is again dropping references to the High Republic era in a story of his. At any rate, Commander Grek continues on informing the Rebels that he will be telling them about Operation Starlight. Meanwhile, Lando is trying to earn the trust of Leia, Chewbacca, and Luke and wants to make amends for Han's capture, so he decides to go to Tatooine to reach out to some of his contacts and learn if Boba Fett has delivered Han to Jabba the Hutt yet. Leia agrees to let Lando go on this mission, providing him with the Millennium Falcon and orders Chewbacca to go with Lando to keep a watchful eye on him. Almost immediately upon arriving at Tatooine, Lando and Chewbacca find themselves being attacked by the Empire since they're flying the very sought-after Millennium Falcon. Before Lando and Chewie can even react though, the TIE fighters chasing them are immediately destroyed by starships of the Harlock gang and inform Lando and Chewie they're going with them. However, through some sweet talking and trickery, Lando is able to convince the Harlock gang to escort he and Chewie to Jabba's palace to finish a deal with Jabba, at which time Lando will then give these gang members a cut of his potential profits from the deal he'll supposedly be finalizing, which is a total fabrication and smooth talking from Lando. But the Harlock gang takes the bait and agrees to Lando's proposition. Quick aside, I think these Weequay gang members might be a part of the same gang that was mentioned in issue 1 of the Greg Park Darth Vader series that was recently released. In that issue, while Vader is on Tatooine, he's attacked by two members of an unknown gang, one of which is a human and the other being a Weequay. Before they actually attacked Vader, they mentioned that they were going to inform the other members of their gang that they had planned to attack an Imperial shuttle and rob them, but they never mentioned the gang by name. I could be totally wrong, but I think they might be part of the same gang, since the timelines of both comics line up and take place immediately following the end of The Empire Strikes Back. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. Anyway, once Lando is at Jabba's palace, we see him speaking to an Amanian and asks him if he has seen Boba Fett, and the Amanian tells him he hasn't, confirming that Boba Fett has yet to deliver Han to Jabba the Hutt. Lando asks the Amanian 
to inform him the moment he sees Boba Fett. I love that Lando then tells the Amanian to stay flat, as well as the fact that we actually get to see an Amanian at Jabba's palace in this issue, as one can briefly be seen in the background of Jabba's palace during Return of the Jedi. So I'm assuming that's the same character, but I'm not entirely positive. As Lando is finally able to speak with Jabba, Jabba informs him that he's already learned that Lando tricked the Harlock gang and that he and Lando won't be finalizing any deal for Lando to provide Jabba with a cheap supply of Tabana gas since the Empire has requisitioned Cloud City from Lando. Additionally, due to Lando having arrived on Tatooine in the Millennium Falcon, and since Han still owes Jabba a large sum of money, Jabba wants to take the Millennium Falcon from Lando. Lando objects and offers Jabba info that Han was frozen in carbonite on Cloud City and that he could tell Jabba who currently has Han. Jabba tells Lando that he of course will be telling Jabba who has Han, but Lando must still provide more to Jabba to keep him from taking the Falcon. Finally, Lando tells him that the Rebels have taken him in and that he will inform Jabba of any information he thinks Jabba might find interesting. Jabba apparently agrees to this because then we see Lando back on the Millennium Falcon with Chewbacca at the helm, leaving Tatooine, and Lando informs Chewbacca that Boba Fett has yet to bring Han to Jabba, so they can still work on trying to track down Han. Lando and Chewbacca then return to the 4th Division, and Lando approaches Luke with a proposition to have Luke take him back to Bespin, but Luke has no desire to go back until Lando mentions that since Luke lost his lightsaber on Cloud City, and Lando knows Cloud City inside and out, he'll be able to show Luke where his lightsaber fell. Before Luke can even answer Lando, however, he's interrupted by a vision of a shrouded individual on Bespin that appears to have caught his lightsaber as it fell down the shaft following his duel with Darth Vader. This individual is reaching out to Luke and telling him to follow his destiny. And that's where the comic leaves off at. At this point, we don't know who that hooded individual is, if that person is even real, or if maybe they're a force vision that Luke is seeing, or if maybe Luke is actually seeing a vision of himself. Another guess is that maybe it's Verla, who was a force-sensitive acolyte of Jedi Padawan Farron Barr from another Charles Soul comic series, Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. We'll just have to wait and see. Issue 3 comes out on February 26th, so I'll be anxiously waiting for that to drop. As with Issue 1, I really enjoyed this issue. Aside from the fact that we may be learning more about what the hell happened to Luke's lightsaber after Empire Strikes Back, we also got another clue from Charles Soule regarding Project Luminous and the High Republic era. But what do you guys think of this issue? Who do you think that hooded individual at the end of the issue is, and what do you think we might learn regarding Luke's lightsaber? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's On Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's On Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.